We know that we only understand a tiny fraction of our universe. One of the most significant achievements of cosmology is the idea that the baryonic matter that you, me, the Earth, stars and galaxies are made from only accounts for around 5% of the universe's total energy budget. The remaining 95% lies in mystery and is believed to belong to the dark sector of the universe. The dark sector is made of two theorized phenomena that are not physically related to each other. They share the sector only because we can't directly observe them, so are considered dark to us. In fact, the two phenomena act in somewhat opposite ways. Dark matter pulls things together with gravity on scales of galaxies and galaxy clusters, and dark energy pushes the universe apart, making it expand faster and faster on the largest scales imaginable. While we don't know what dark energy or dark matter are, we believe they are fundamentally important to the universe. In fact, the standard model of cosmology that we use to explain the universe must have around 71% of the total energy budget be dark energy and 24% be dark matter. We've never directly seen either dark energy or dark matter, rather we infer their existence in quantity by fitting cosmological models to observe data, such as distant supernovae or galaxy rotation curves. We call the standard model of cosmology the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, or Lambda CDM. In this name, Lambda represents dark energy, and cold dark matter represents a specific theory of dark matter. This model has been phenomenally successful at explaining the observed universe and at making testable predictions. It's a testament to scientific achievement, but cracks are beginning to show in this model. One of those cracks is dark energy. It might not even exist. Now that's quite an extreme statement to make in cosmology, but in recent years a growing number of results are suggesting that dark energy is not behaving as we would expect. One major result from the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument Group, or DESI, suggests something radical, that the strength of dark energy changes over time. And a new paper from the group that I've been working with suggests that the expansion history of the universe can be better explained by another cosmological model entirely, known as the Timescape model. In the Timescape model, there is no dark energy. It's simply not needed. Instead, the evolution of the universe is driven by the formation of large-scale structures in the universe, like galaxies, superclusters, and giant voids of nothing. This idea is in stark contrast to Lambda CDM, which asserts that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic which essentially means that on large enough scales, the stuff of the universe is evenly spread out, so that all areas look and behave the same. So large-scale structures don't play a significant role in Lambda CDM. Now let's get a better idea of what structure means for the universe, to understand this difference between the models. On these cosmic scales, it's also important to remember that the further away we look, the further back in time we look. At the biggest observable distance, we find the cosmic microwave background. In this image, we find that the universe is incredibly uniform, with minuscule variations. At this stage, I think everyone would agree that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. It looks the same in every part. Now if we look at distances closer to us, we can see that the young universe is still pretty uniform. But now there are hints of differences that are emerging on small scales. These differences grow as the universe ages. Over cosmic time, gravity pulls things towards the regions that have slightly more stuff than the other regions. This is a self-enforcing process. The more stuff that gathers in a region, the stronger the influence will be, so more stuff is drawn into these dense regions. Gravity may be a weak force compared to the other fundamental forces, but on these scales, it shapes the cosmos. Looking at the universe again, now in the local universe, where it's had much more time to evolve, we see monumental structures emerge. These structures are often referred to as the cosmic web, where the majority of matter in the universe lives on these filaments that thread giant voids of nothing. On these filaments lie superclusters of galaxies. At this time of the universe, and on this spatial scale, the universe no longer appears uniform. While we could take a box of space, smooth over it, and say the universe is still uniform, 
we might be smoothing over real effects from these structures. With the general theory of relativity, we know that mass has an impact on space. Gather enough mass in a region and it will do two major things, bend space and slow time. So if there were more mass in the filaments and voids, then we might expect the bending of space to be different between the two regions. And importantly, a clock in a filament will run slower than a clock in a void. These effects are the cornerstone of the timescape cosmological model. When the universe is young and uniform, Lambda CDM and timescape predict similar behavior. However, this changes when cosmic structures begin to form, as they can have a feedback loop on the universe, which leads to different predictions between the two cosmological models. So while Lambda CDM cares about dark energy, timescape cares about how much of the universe is dominated by voids which is simply called the void fraction. Interestingly, we see that voids start dominating the volume of the universe around the same time as when dark energy starts taking over in Lambda CDM. Is this just a cosmic coincidence? Or could the effects of cosmic structure have always been misinterpreted as indirect evidence of dark energy? This is a very good question and certainly one worth exploring. For the last two years, I've been working with the creator of the Timescape model, Professor David Wiltshire, and two PhD students, Zach Lane and Antonia Seifert, to test this question with supernova. For decades, supernova in particular, Type 1a supernovae, have been our best tool in cosmology. These supernovae explode in a predictable way, allowing us to calculate their intrinsic brightness. And just like any source of light, the further away they are, the fainter they appear. So with the intrinsic and observed brightnesses, we can calculate the luminosity distance. But since this is on a cosmic scale, effects from cosmological models start to matter. Each cosmological model has a way to calculate distances using a quantity known as redshift. Redshift is essentially a measure of how much light has been reddened by the effects of cosmic expansion. So larger redshifts mean bigger cosmological distances. With both the luminosity distance and redshift, we can use Type 1a supernova to test cosmological models. It was observations of 1a's in the 90s that showed evidence of the accelerated expansion of the universe, which led to this idea of dark energy. So the standard model does very well at explaining supernova data. This makes comparing models against Lambda CDM challenging because the difference between observable model predictions will be small. To make these comparisons, we need big datasets where details become very important. For our test, we use the largest supernova sample that was available at the time, which is known as Pantheon Plus. The sample is a testament to science, combining data from numerous telescopes different filters and surveys, all while keeping an incredibly accurate account of errors for around 1,500 supernova. As good as this data is, we had to be careful to avoid data with built-in cosmological assumptions. For decades, Lambda CDM has been the standard model, so there are some data reduction steps that assume Lambda CDM cosmology. Since we were making comparisons between two observationally similar models, small biases in favor of Lambda CDM from data reduction could change the outcome. After some untangling, we finally had data that we were confident was free of any cosmological bias. And with this data, we could make comparisons between Lambda CDM and Timescape using a Bayesian framework. This framework allows us to make a direct comparison of how well the cosmological models fit the Pantheon Plus data. For this analysis, we run the comparison many times, systematically stepping through the data. The Pantheon Plus supernova were observed at a range of distances, or redshifts away from us. Nearby supernova have redshifts of close to zero, and are more impacted by the effects of large-scale structure than the distant high redshift supernova. To see how structure might impact the models, we fit and compare the two cosmological models many times. For each comparison, we make a cut on redshift, meaning that we only include supernova with redshifts or distances greater than our cut. 
So if we make a redshift cut of zero, all supernovae are included. But if we make the cut at say 0.06, only those supernovae further away than 0.06 are included. Now after traumatizing the computational servers, we found something quite surprising, which we can show with a figure. This figure is quite complicated, so bear with me as we step through it. On the y-axis we have the Bayes factor, where numbers greater than zero indicate a preference to the timescape model, and numbers less than zero indicate a preference towards lambda CDM. The bigger the number, the stronger the preference. On the x-axis we have the redshift cuts from earlier. So if we have a point on the top left, that means that timescape is strongly favored if we include all supernova data. Alternatively, if there is a point on the lower right, that means lambda CDM is strongly favored when all low shift supernova are cut out. Okay, so that's the main idea behind this plot. So what does the data say? Well, here it is. Now this result is quite surprising because it's just so lopsided. When we include all supernova data, there is a very strong preference for the timescape model over lambda CDM. As we cut out the closest supernova, the preference for timescape decreases until it reaches a minimum around a redshift of 0.04. This part is pretty straightforward since as we cut out more of the close supernova which are more impacted by structure, lambda CDM will naturally fit the data better. But after the dip, timescape becomes slightly preferred over lambda CDM. Now this last part is quite interesting. Even when the universe is considered to be homogeneous and isotropic according to lambda CDM, the timescape model, which accounts for cosmic structure, is a slightly better fit to the supernova data. But what does all of this mean? Have we proven that there is no dark energy? I wouldn't go that far, at least not yet. What we have shown is that supernova data is good enough now to really test lambda CDM, and it is looking very promising for the timescape model. More work is definitely needed here to do this analysis. We had to drop a few bias correction terms that aren't yet calculated in a timescape context. But the effect of these terms is small. They are necessary to fully test the models. Despite these limitations, our results agree with a similar test made by the Dark Energy Survey, using their independent sample of supernova. While Timescape seems to fit supernova data extremely well, it's a mathematically complex model and more development is needed before it can be applied to other cosmological tests. But there are lots of other very interesting results coming from Professor Wiltshire's group that are continuing to challenge the standard model of cosmology on a fundamental level. On a personal note, I find the premise of Timescape to be quite compelling. It has a conceptual simplicity to it where what we observe is simply the effect of how general relativity plays out on a large scale, not some unknown phenomena which could be the result of theoretical oversimplification. It seems like cracks are beginning to emerge for Lambda CDN. As more data is gathered by upcoming instruments like the Vera Rubin Observatory, Euclid and the Roman Space Telescope, we may find ourselves in another cosmological revolution. From this revolution, will time-evolving dark energy emerge as the new standard model, or will a model like Timescape take up the mantle? Time will tell, but for now, we know that we only understand a tiny fraction of our universe. <laughs>